Good afternoon guys, James here from Sunseeker Southampton. We're actually down in the shipyards in Poole this morning to bring you something really exciting. Uh, this is actually a cancelled order boat. The client decided to go for a larger boat with us while this was in build. So we've tweaked a few bits. She's literally finished and ready to hand over to hopefully her new Lucky Only in not too distant future. She is the awesome new Superhawk 55. This is just behind me here, boat 704. Check out that interior. She's finished in that fantastic platinum gray hull band here. So this would be standard in a white gel coat, but we have a gray gel coat finish there. And then we have the optional hard top arrangement up there, finished in LSA jet black. So that's a painted option. Very, very racy looking here with the black boot top stripe running down the hull band here, black anti-fouling. It is an awesome, awesome bit of kit. Launched earlier this year, we covered the boat back in January, actually at the Dusseldorf Boat Show. That was a white one which is off now in a sunny climate. Overseas, boat's absolutely loaded up full med spec and we'll cover off a few possible additions you could put on if you wanted to, to further enhance the boat. As you see her here in pounds, she's about 1.63 million pounds X tax loaded up with a very nice spec. That would include a Williams 285 mini jet to go in the garage. So let's check her out in a little bit more detail up on board. Uh, just walking across the back here, so we have the interceptor trim tab system. So these are sort of self adjusting for list and trim when the boat's up and running, part of Volvo's blade system. And that works really nicely with the IPS. Single engine option on these, which is the IPS 950. And they're running in test around 36, 37 knots. Med spec with a tender in the back, typical lows. Few stats for you. They're just over 17.2 meters long, about 4.8 meters in the beam and weighing in around 25 tons, 1,800 litres of fuel on board. We've got 450 litres of fresh water. So plenty to enjoy the boat away for a few days at anchor if you want. And we've just jumped up on the back here. So we're on the hydraulic high-low platform. This is obviously submersible, 300 kilo lift on this. So there's room to put something like a Spark two-seater, 90 horsepower jet ski on the back if you wish. I'm not going to go through all the garages and, and lockers and what have you because we've done that on the channel earlier in the year but we do have in the top of here this lifts up on electric rams we've got room for some sea bobs so flooding garage beneath that where the 280 mini jet will stow away the boat obviously being med spec does have a letterbox style passerelle that comes out hidden underneath the step there and all the additions of things like the lower level cleats here uh, we've got the big sun pad with a multi-configurable back seat so these drop down to give you a full-size sunbed they can face forward as they are now to give you dining space in the cockpit or these bases can drop flat these then lift up and that gives you a beautiful aft facing sunbed lots of painted detail you can see the black in here it runs all the way around the back there space for a, a backlit name on the transom if you wish and as you will have seen on the cgi's if you've seen lots of exciting press about these boats earlier in the year pre-launch detail things like the stainless steel transom gates here We've got some uh, LED panels up in the forward skylight there, all finished off like a Union Jack. Very, very back to Sunseeker pedigree in our true heritage fashion. Say, so awesome to drive. You're never going to see a 60 knot Sunseeker superboat anymore. Those days are behind us. It's more about volume, life on the water, but still a great compromise with that sort of upper end 30 knot running. It is effortless to drive and still gets through the water extremely quickly. So we're just having a scan around. These are multi-configurable seats around the table. Obviously the top can open up. You can have the option for a, a fixed pedestal leg here, or you can have an adjustable height one. This being adjustable, you've got little clamps there. And the seats themselves obviously push the full beam on the cockpit here at the moment. So you walk through the middle, very simple on the clip, just push the buttons here and we slide it forward. And that then is in for dining. So you can see then you've got a nice social seating there easily seat 10 around the back very very social space and you can even have this bit set up for seating with that then as a sun pad behind very very versatile you'll see we're using a synthetic gray decking arrangement here and they've inlaid some very nice led lighting in through here and up onto the bows arrangement as well uh, always practical as well to make the boat functional just slide the seat back here we do have some outboard lockers here on the walks either side and you'll notice obviously no side deck running all the way aft to give this monstrous wide 
aft cockpit arrangement. So the access actually into the bows is out through the side doors here and we have one either side of the helm here, depending on where you're coming into dock or wanting to sit up top when you're at anchor. So just scanning around on the camera here, this is a centerline wet bar arrangement, pretty typical on something of this size. We can see loaded up with all of the typical refrigeration, ice maker, sink in this one, griddle in this one, and then we have a couple of lockers either side here. There's an option, this particular boat doesn't have it, but we could retrofit a water resistant high-low TV on a mechanism in there if you so wish. Uh, we've got a nice fusion AV system here. We can further upgrade that with amplification and subwoofer and what have you. Feature LED lighting here. You can see running through the ceiling panels on that lovely black painted roof. There has been some discussion, uh, potentially on future boats, adding some sort of skylight or sunroof in here. If I'm honest, even on a gray day here in pool, there's so much natural light comes into the copper here. I don't feel personally it's needed, but it could be retrofitted at a later date once we've engineered the final solution on that one. Some very, very cool colors on this one. So we've finished in like a teal aquamarine color here on the seats. And again, you can see the stitching detail in the triple helm seat. So we've got plenty of space for, for a pilot and a couple of co-pilots there, all enjoying that vista. And we stand up at the center line helm here. You can see exactly what you're seeing in my eye line at the moment. So we're looking through the glass there whilst we're sat down. And if we stand up, we effectively are looking through the acrylic panel up top there. So if you're using the boat in the UK out of season, we can put this clever little acrylic section in there. And then there is an aft curtain actually coming off the arch down behind the back there to give you an enclosed cockpit. There is a retrofitable uh, sun awning we'll be putting onto this one as well for further sun protection on the aft end of the cockpit. But if we just scan back round here to the dashboard, you can see everything very nicely laid out to hand here. Obviously centerline driving position with throttles and the IPS joystick over there for docking. Just a barrel thruster on this one, obviously with that drop down platform on the stern, there isn't room for a stern thruster, but honestly not required with one of these at all. We've got uh, Volvo's dynamic positioning. So that's the station hold using a GPS signal. If you're waiting perhaps for a lock or the fuel key, very nice feature to have. Standard on the boat is a 16 inch Garmin multifunction display. Using Garmin NavKit on these, obviously, as that integrates with Volvo's IPS system extremely well. You notice it's currently up on the Seakeeper page, as this particular boat is powered with a Seakeeper 6 gyro stabilizer down in the engine room. And if you so wish, as well as one MFD here that will do your chart plotter, your radar, and what have you, there is space to add a second screen in here if you wish. We've obviously got engine telemetry up the top here in the middle, and then our monitoring panel here is on all Sun Seekers for tankage and alarm systems and a lot more digital switching we're starting to see on the boats really tidying up the dashboard very very few switches to press for all of the control functions on the boat uh, we do also have the aircon upgrade so we've got some blowers here at the dash for those hotter days obviously with the canopy out this will generate a fair amount of natural airflow through here anyway uh, you can see the lights here we mentioned earlier about the leds and they run down into the deck saloon below, which we'll have a look at in just a sec. Very, very nice elevated position here, but everything's very nice and close. So you can imagine still being a part of the action if you're entertaining with your guests on board, even as an owner operator, where you're running the boat yourself rather than with a captain. So we just come out the side door here. You can see how huge these wide decks are, almost like you'd see on an 88 yacht. Very, very deep bulwarks here. So very, very safe as it is as area you would find used a lot, either at anchor or perhaps underway at slow speed. And we're just coming up a small step in the side deck here to take us up onto the seating and the sunbed arrangement. Now we cover these in, uh, in Dusseldorf, so I'm not gonna demonstrate it now, but this forward sun pad area can slide aft over this seat. And then we've got a full size sunbed here. These are lift up backrests on the seat cushions here, again with the inlaid teal decking. And with it slid back, we then have a reveal for a small seat. Underneath here, there's a little cushion to sit on there. Nice place to sit, I say, when the boat's running at slow speed. And just scanning up top there, you see as well as painting the roof, we painted the radome and the spotlight and all the aerials up top there. So it's very, very moody finish on the boat, beautifully appointed. And it works really nice contrast here with this light gray deck with the lighting running through the middle here, as you can see.
Uh, there are a few practical touches, obviously things like the anchor winch stowed below deck here to keep everything nice and clear, not stubbing your toes on and what have you. You can see the controls here. This lifts up, there's access then for fender storage in here and then we have a couple of deck lockers either end of this sunbed arrangement as well as rope lockers and what have you underneath the seat there. Big center wiper there with a washer system for that one piece glass windscreen. It is a vast piece of glass and it does very much set the boat apart from having a center line support in there which would reduce your visibility somewhat. You can see how the pantograph door here works. You can see the double cantilevered hinge and that is effortless there to bring it across, clamp it down and then it does enclose the cockpit as required. It gives you a little bit more room down the side decks there for perhaps passing your tripping line if you're doing your, your med style docking or bit of ventilation when you're at anchor but shut it all down and then very much an enclosed space if you want to run the boat when the weather's not so good. So let's head on down. Single access down into the below deck accommodation here from the starboard side. Takes us down a curved step. This particular boat finished with the satin silver oak woodwork here and then we have a carpet upgrade here in the saloon below as well as the lovely funky turquoise upholstery here on the sofas. Loads of scatter cushions, these are obviously all spread out for the exterior cushions as well. There's some backrest cushions for those wicker backrests that you saw on the aft end seating arrangement as well. And I'm just scanning around so you can take in the fit and finish of the colors in here. Excuse the um, frame rate on the TV there, but we have the optional 43 inch TV up on the bulkhead. And then a basic linear galley here over on the port side. Boat obviously will do around 250 nautical miles on a single tank so it does have the capability to go away for a few days at a time we've got two big cabins i was saying some basic cooking facilities with a an oven in the middle here we've got some electric hobs on top this is an extractor fan in the middle single sink and then the basics in terms of cupboards in here we've got a decent sized refrigerator with a freezer compartment up top there and there's a little drawer and what have you in here uh, there is some unfinished deck storage. I'll show you underneath the floors here, just what I'm talking about. But we have a locker here underneath the floor. We could put bottles of water and bits and pieces like that. Uh, we've got black waste tank, water tank, little bit more storage in that back one. And then electrical systems and aircon controls and what have you tucked down behind the sofa there. Uh, we've got a fusion stereo system in here linked up to the TV. Uh, TV's got Apple TV on it. Dimmable lighting throughout. There's a pep wave system with an onboard router. Just lift the light up there above us on the camera. Finish really nice with these black gloss panels as well on the bulkheads. So two cabins on the boat. Much discussion on these originally as to whether one or the other was the master, but they are both in their own right, very similar status. So if we start in the front, I would normally call this the VIP guest cabin. We have a decent size center line double bed. There's some storage cupboards down underneath there, basic charging facilities around the bed. That's the cushion for the four deck seat that we mentioned earlier. Lots and lots of lighting detail in here, as well as some soft materials up here. There's an emergency escape hatch actually up to the four deck there, opening port lights, aircon system reverse cycle. So you've got heating and cooling. There's a wardrobe in there, door to put back on that. Guy's just doing a few PDI jobs on the boat at the moment. It's beautiful, say black lacquered finish here on the doors. En suite, of course, so this would provide private uh, access for the cabin itself and you've got a nicely appointed shower up the end there and the Tecma upgrade on the toilets to vacuum flush fresh water in both of the bathrooms. We're on EU two pin sockets. There is a combination of few USBs kicking around as well. You we can swap those out for UK three pins if you need to. And we've just come up aft here, stepping down a couple of steps into the master cabin. So this for me, being the midships is the preferred option as the master. We've got the full beam benefit then, even that gray day outside. We've got these beautiful big windows, again, opening port lights. And then we have a couple of wardrobes either side. Those are the cushions for the backrests outside I mentioned earlier. Lighting is all quite dimmed in here at the moment, but still very bright and airy. We've got another wardrobe over here, some storage cupboards either side. They've been very clinical with things like the light switches around the bed and what have you, are all tucked back in the ends of the cupboards there to keep things nice and neat and tidy. 
And then we have the TV up on the bulkhead there as well. I say very, very nicely spec'd. If you were keeping the boat here in the UK, maybe further additions of things like a diesel powered heating system. We could put some outside vents up here, maybe plumb that into the dashboard. Of course, things like the illuminated name is quite common on the back. But all in all, she is a very, very nice spec boat. Literally just out of the factory for PDI, she's been put in the water, tested the engines, signed off by the shipyard, and then we've lifted her straight back out here into our sales lineup. Needs around three to four weeks to prep the boat for final onwards delivery. So there is plenty of time to get this one finished and off and into the med for the summer. Or if you want to use it here in the UK, obviously take advantage of the sunshine here through the best of the summer months. So you see, if you'd like to know any more, as always, please get in touch directly. It's james at sunseekersouthampton.com or the mobile is plus four four seven seven four seven six eight six five eight seven. Hope you've had a good look round with us today and we look forward to hearing from you soon.